recording in progress. Right. Welcome to the Sterile Books launch of Unknown. I am really excited to be here tonight with Callie Richmond and Hannah Davies and Anna Rose James and Elizabeth Chadwick Pywell to bring you a fantastic book and fantastic um, poets uh, sharing this really good evening with you. We are recording it as you can hear. Um, that means that um, Everything that you see tonight, you can probably catch up on later if you wanted to hear it again or whatnot. It'll be available on the Sterile Books' YouTube channel in a handful of days. That also means that people come in a little bit late, they can catch up with it, they can catch up with it later. Um, everyone is muted, which is great, but if you do happen to unmute yourself, keep in mind that we can hear you if your phone rings or your dog barks or you decide to you know, boil the kettle for a cup of tea. So it's best just to not unmute yourself. We will have a brief intermission somewhere around the middle. Uh, perhaps you can unmute yourself then, but it's gonna be a very short one. And at the end, when we do the question and answer time, again, you can try to unmute yourself, but we seem to be having a little bit of feedback tonight. So we'll play that part, um, we'll play that part by ear. Um, Alan and I have been running sterile books for oh, about 15 years now. And um, we get a lot of really good manuscripts. Um, it's, it's lovely, um, but, Anna and Liz sent us this manuscript, I think it's about a year ago now, it's been a little while. And we were, we were blown away by it. We were just blown away. We we're blown away by the idea of it, a view of women in the past, whether from mythology or history, but the poems themselves are so strong. Uh, they are so in your face, they are so evocative. They are so wonderful that we just, we just, had to do the book. We just had to do the book. And um, we took our time to get it done the right way. The cover is magnificent. Um, I'm a, it, the name of the artist is escaping me right now, but it's just amazing. Someone put the name in the chat. It, it, uh, she's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So um, we are delighted to bring you this book here tonight. Um, we will be offering free shipping because we are here on Zoom because of, of circumstance. And so at an event, you wouldn't have to pay for shipping. And so we will be shipping it to you for free in the UK. And um, if you're having it shipped um, out of the country, as Alan has pointed out a little bit before, the amount of the shipping that would have been to the UK will be deducted from whatever your shipping charges would be to wherever you are. And if you decide to get any other of our sterile books uh, offerings tonight, if you go onto our website and poke around between now and maybe tomorrow, you can get free shipping on those books too. And Alan has gone completely mad and said, buy three, get one free. So just like we would often do at a launch, actually. So welcome. Um, tonight, we're going to be uh, starting uh, with um, Callie Richmond. Then we're going to hear from Hannah Davies. And then we're going to hear from our two authors. Then we're going to have a tiny break. And then we're going to hear from everyone again. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session if you want to ask anything. So during the course of the evening, put your questions as they occur to you into the chat, and I will look through that and, and find them. And at the end of the evening, I will read your questions out loud um, for you. And then we can all hear the answers. And as I've said, it is being recorded. So if you do find you have to step away because Zoom is literally in your face, um, you will be able to catch up with this entire event um, in a few days when we put it up on our on our YouTube um, channel. So, yay, I'm so excited. Let's get this on the way. I'm going to read the little blurb that we had out there um, in the press release. Unknown is a collection of 27 poems inspired by women from myth and history, featuring appearances from Medusa. Oh, and I'm going to mispronounce all the words because I'm just not a classicist. Persephone, probably. Um, Sir Within the Witch, um, and a, fair, a bunch of other people I'm now not going to say, um, and including um, actual people who lived in history, um, Gentleman Jack, uh, revolutionary pilots Bessie Coleman, and Major Marina Raskova, tennis champion Althea Gibson, and characters from Norwegian folklore, Shakespeare, and the tarot. These poems are celebrations, love letters, eulogies, reclamations, and responses. And that is so true. You know, you just spend the whole night gonna wanna go, yeah, it is absolutely amazing. So to start off the evening, this is a young woman I have never heard from before. I am just so excited to hear you read. This is Callie Richmond. Um, Callie is a lapsed video artist living in the North of England. 
Her poetry has featured in various publications, including Gutter, The Babel Tower, Green Ink Poetry, Jaden Magazine, Marble Magazine, and Porridge. In 2020, she won both the Reflex Press and Lucent Dreaming flash fiction competitions. Her debut pamphlet, A Work of Eco Poetry, Gradual Reduction to the Bone to Bone, is out um, with Nine Pens Press. Welcome, Callie. I am really looking forward to this. Thank you for being here now. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, Liz and Anna. And yeah, congratulations on your beautiful book that my camera is not doing justice, but it's an amazing cover and a very, very, very special book. I love it. Um, I'm going to screen share now. I'll try to. Um, I'm, I'm going to interject the tiniest bit, the tiniest Callie. Bit. Somehow your noise, it's a little tiny bit um, rough. Do you think your microphone is not plugged all the way in? Crackly, I think. Yeah, crackly. Okay. okay, give me a second. Thanks. Hannah can go first because I'm. <laughs> my partner works for studio, so he can definitely fix that. Am I still crack still crackly? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Rice and crispy. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so okay. now I can I can reintroduce you later. Um, I have known Hannah for what, 16 years? We were in a play together many, many years ago. It's fantastic. Hannah, she and her, is a playwright, theater maker, and multi-slam winning spoken word artist based in New York. Hannah trained as an actor at Mount View Academy of Theater Arts and has worked across theater, radio, and TV. She studied playwriting at the Royal Court Theater and has an MA in theater and a PhD in creative practice and playwriting from the University of York, where she teaches as an associate lecturer. Hannah is an experienced workshop leader and facilitator of writing, storytelling, and performance techniques. She is the artistic director of Common Ground Theater and an associate artist at Say Out, York's leading spoken word organization. Hannah Davies, welcome. Hi, hello. Thank you. That's a lovely, lovely intro. Nice to see you all. Thanks for your um, silent clapping. That's really nice. <laughs> hello, everyone. It's really nice to be here and um, yeah, thanks to Anna and Elizabeth for asking me to be here and support the launch of your book. It, I'm, yeah, I'm just dead chuffed and I can't wait to get my hands on a copy and read through what you've been working on. So yeah, it's really, really cool to be here. Um, I am going to start with a poem um, which I wrote in lockdown and one of the things that I really missed in lockdown <laughs> I mean, this is like first world problems, but I kind of miss charity shops and cruising the charity shops and looking for bargains. Like that is one of my great pleasures in life. And I really missed it when it wasn't there. So I am going to give you a poem about charity shops. And in my house, we call charity shops Chazzers. We shorten it to Chazzers. So that's what the name of the poem is. It's Chazzers. Now just bear with me. I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully you should then be able to see the text. Great, fantastic. Okay, let's get rid of these. Chazzers. I find my peace in Chazzers. I seek them out in strange towns, meandered back off the high street in wonky step-up shops with rattling doors. Inside, the women, like a gang of crocheted bumblebees who've lost their sting, sip at the porcelain pollen of too sweet tea. Always too many for what the retail task entails. They crowd around counters, pass bags, check tags and numbers twice, ring digits gingerly into tills, then come up with a price and a there you go, dearie. Or they call you duck or pop it in ways you'd never take off others. But these women's words heal the hurts of the fast outside. They are like soft toffees from a mantelpiece. I find my peace in chazzers, among the dusty rails of old jumble sails, a hundred mismatched bits in an outcast state, bin bagged stacks of worn out dreams, junk and jewel and nonsense shelved and hung and organized in shape or style or color, tarnished tat and jaded suits shadowed with decay and grief. Whispers of clearouts, cleanups, and lives lost or discarded, but stay sharp among the mess, and you will find a flash of joy, and for pennies, it is yours. 
My best finds include a cotton dress, long loved and frayed, a brass Buddha at a steel, a handwritten love letter hidden in a Salman Rushdie novel, and an overcoat that makes me feel and look like a brave revolutionary. I find my peace in Chaz's. As a girl, I stalked the bookshelves in the tight back rooms, scanned the spines for blighten, eyes primed for the familiar black squiggle promise of ripping yarns. I find my peace in Chazers, and they are not the best china of their town, but they'll do just fine for me. I collect their patchwork aimless chats, sung and mumbled in vowels just off the lanes, thick with the grub and smell of what means local home round here. A simple, by heck, I like that coats, or Maureen, does this polish smell too claggy? A man stands by the till and gives a blow-by-blow -blow account of the bestest way to install a ceiling fan. You got to mind the motion, won't drag at the plaster, you see. And today, in one, in Whitby, the best thing I think I've ever seen, a battered yellow fold-up chair put out by the door for weary souls, stuck with a handwritten note that reads, rest and be thankful. Simple moments we must always remember to take. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yay. That's really nice seeing little, little silent applause, I have to say. Thanks for your silent applause. I'm very grateful. So yeah, that was me and charity shops. They've been restored, which has made me a very happy woman, as you can imagine. Just didn't been getting some bargains since they've come back. Um, and actually, my poem does a pretty good job of introducing my next poem, which I shall also share for you. So my next poem is um, it's a found poem. Uh, and found poem is a poem that you, you find and build from texts found elsewhere. So you might find them out of street signs or snippets of old letters or where, wherever it inspires you, really. Um, but this particular poem um, is inspired by Whitby, the Whitby that was set up in the last stanza of that last poem. And I was staying in Whitby and the place where I was staying had a little tiny book. Um, and it was a little book of lots of literary sources of other writers talking about Whitby and mentioning it in lots of different ways and how they've stayed there and what they loved about it. So I thought that was really cool. I love Whitby. So I stole all of their words and copied and pasted it into a poem um, in their honour. And it goes like this. Share with you again. Bear with me. There we go. So the name of the book that it was taken from uh, is Whitby in Literature by H.P. Kendall. And this is my poem. When I find it hard as ever to be jolly and long to escape the weary drudge of being, when my will burns corpse lit and frail with a second-hand gentility and I yearn for transformation by sea mist, why then I shall post myself to Whitby my best beloved town which my soul was smit by. This piled up tumble of red roofs and green slope, it talks a pure Yorkshire that delights my soul. It is as good as ever, unchanged, better than Cornwall. And though my mind is rocks and shoals and hidden dangers, and my weather has been a little wrong side out of late, do you wonder that here I linger? Here I shall crown my head with a chimney pot hat, symbol of the Englishman's faith, stiff, hollow and pervious to the rain. Here I shall stroll across the multitudes of sand, shed a tear for both walrus and the carpenter, and then take shelter neath the cliffs where under their leafy gorge I'll let my piteous sorrows cascade and swirl. This town is wind blown and cold, it echoes with the clang of ancient shipyards' hammers. And though waves break endless across the hundred wrecks that haunt these shores, I shall not become one. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to swig water at you now. <laughs> Thanks, team. I love found poems. I find that doing found poems is a really good way uh, to write if you're feeling a bit stuck um, with writing. You kind of get to some points in your life as a writer when you're like, oh, I don't know what to do and all, I'm kind of feeling a bit blocked. But found poems are a really good way to kind of get the, uh, the old juices flowing again, as it were. Okay, have I got time for one more? 
one little more before I pass back over to Carly. Yeah, uh, bear with me. I'm just going to do a little short one then. So this, um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you might know I've had a, a long period of in ill health, which, which has kind of led me to uh, reassess lots of things about my life and my relationship to my body, which is doing a really good job of healing for me and all those kinds of things. But um, this poem was inspired by a quote by Ram Das, who's like a spiritual spiritual leader teacher, which I really like the quote, but um, I'll put the quote in the chat later, but I'll, I'll give you the poem first without the quote, otherwise I'll give away the punchline, not punchline, but you know, like point of the poem. So here you go, this is my last one. Can you see that? Yeah, oh, sorry. Oh shit, sorry. <laughs> You were all there. There you go. Forest. I'm practicing, like the wise man said, to see my imperfect body like a tree. I've reached for light and love and treasured joy in the only ways that I knew how, feeling my twisted way around rock and clod and rubble. And why did I listen to the world and demand that I straighten up my trunk and curve and curious mind in its cruel honor? be less like this and more like that? Why did I become so self-condemning and unkind? Now I shall choose to walk with her, my body consort in the shades of grace and love and being. I will wear the jagged twigs and rushing leaves that have withheld all the storms I rode. I will carry my blessed boughs without shame or censor. Let us all reach for sunlight in our own crooked ways and put down roots to please ourselves. Let a glorious flesh forest grow. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. I'll pass you over to Carly now. Uh, enjoy the rest of the evening and I'll see you a bit later on as well, I think. Bye. Hannah, thank you. I love that. My body as the consort. Exactly, exactly. Um, Kelly. You ready to go? Do you think? Do you want me to read your intro again? I'm happy to do that. I think everyone just heard it. It's wonderful. I think the most important thing to say is that you've won many things. You've been published quite a lot. And right now, your debut pamphlet, a work of eco poetry, Gradual Reduction to Bone, is just recently out with nine pens. Yes, I, I have been seeing it everywhere. And I think I want to get my hands on a copy. So welcome, Callie. And i um, glad you're here. OK. Um... Does my mic sound okay? Oh, yay, phew. <laughs> right, I'm going to, I'm just gonna jump right in and screen share. Uh, okay, so I tried to find some poems that would uh, fit in with the theme of celebrating and unearthing women. And I mean, it's not really what I write about, but I do have a couple. Uh, so the first one's called The Human Gravid Uterus, which is a book by William Hunter, who was a famous anatomist. And there's loads of images of women, so content warning, and there is dissection, and I wouldn't look up the images if you were uncomfortable with that, but they're kind of equally horrifying and beautiful because they show the fetus inside the woman but whenever I've seen these images, I've always thought, thought of the women, who are they? They are unnamed women. So I'll kick off with the poem. The human gravid uterus in memory of the unnamed women. Hands at my ankles, hands at my underarms, me not feeling them, only the fire at my throat. An anatomist, an artist, and two men who supply us an ungodly scene of horror, unraveling at their feet. I learn to traverse, deviate from one to the next, enter them brutally by way of sleep, scream why. You were gin-soaked, bladdered, who spared the babe from mother's ruin, nout but a harlot, fat with flagrant, carnal sin. The artist cowers, weeps for hollow absolution, only William is calm, addresses me as radical scientific advancement, depicted in death so that others may live. You lie nestled within pages, 
as you nestled within my body, life-sized. I pressed spectral lips to sleep and curl, hand tucked up by peach cheek, soft lick of hair. Dear face turned from his knives and plump, clear as day that I nurtured you, but turpentine never coursed cruel through your blood. We were fused and in death should have remained so, but he peeled me back, hacked methodical with intent. His ardent belief, you shall be studied forevermore. Time bloats, yet thumbs still caress our pages, always lingering at us, fetus in utero, mother unknown. Um, so my second poem is um, an excrasis, I suppose, based on this uh, Leonora Carrington self-portrait, which is his, not a very good image, but it's the best I could do in word. <laughs> in the nursery, the horse gifts its bones and industrious we lash them to arched wood so the children may rock towards comfort while the skin gallops free as a kite in the wind, dear nanny engorged, coaxing children to suckle beneath reeking breath, beneath auricular spectre, hair straining free, legs hinged wide, embodying cold walls so the girls may learn what is expected of marriage. I'm just gonna shut my window. <laughs> In case you can all hear from the wind outside. <laughs> And yeah, this is another, I suppose, kind of ex racist poem. Um, this is, oh gosh, this is sorry. <laughs> Louise Bourgeois' Spider from 1994. She did quite a lot of spiders. She did a much bigger one, but this still pretty much fills up a room. And it's also in memory of my Nana, Jean Zivkovich, who was um, also an artist. Odemar Grandmier after Louise Bourgeois, Spider, 1994. Clutch me like an egg to your slick round abdomen. The matriarch casts a net, reels in sun motes, mites. You offer granite cliffs above remnants of Bronze Age settlements and nothing much has changed. A Yegni peering down, spinnerets marking time. Hatch, toil, family, war. Paint joy, enshrine festivity, shades frolicking around the fire. A woman weaves, marionette swaying dexterous to an echo deeply moving, biological stimuli to nurture. And maybe I should have said, um, so her image of the spider was kind of as a caring uh, matriarchal figure, which when I think of that, I think of my Nana. So might not be obvious, but <laughs> it's meant to be a warm image. <laughs> and my last poem is from my pamphlet, which I think came out about a month ago, Gradual Reduction to Bone with Nine Pens. And it's in honour of my friend, Nancy, who I believe is here, and also Barbara Hepworth, Annex. I thought I would make friends at the pottery class. Her career exemplifying modernism spanned five decades, leading avant-garde direct carving. Will the clay run out, I worried as the bin bag filled up. I took you to the Hepworth Gallery in Wakefield and you said you could imagine leaving London. Where does it come from? Earth, yes, but the exact details remain mystery. My usual curiosity dampened by fear relationship between the human figure and the landscape, of facing mass waste, the frivolity of hobbies. Key works, mother and child, 1934. At this narrow point of modernity, the Calder evokes Regent's Canal, how we walked Camden to Angel Week, the vacant space in the centre of the mother's body, after week pushing prams, cradling our precious babes. Why St Ives, do the Pennines not thrash in wild beauty? Each Wednesday evening, two hours of reticence among noise, 
my hand shaping headless women, pierced hemisphere second, 1937 to eight. How scenic our drive, area of outstanding natural beauty, Brimham rocks formed 325 million years ago. When they are in special accord, a child in the womb, one senses the architecture of bones in the human. Does the idol stone not look crafted by hands, formed for Druidic worship? It inspired her, surely. Calda, hard or violent water in early common platonic. My thumbs pressing wide hips, pinching forth breasts. Sandstone quarried at cold stones, unfathomably old. Peer down at the vacant space, returning to our loss. Ooh, how do I stop screen sharing? <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we are now going to hear from the authors of Unknown. And I will read the full bios that I've been sent because I am in awe of both of you. Um, Liz, she, her, is a York-based poet and writer of short stories and flash fiction and an English and drama teacher when she's not writing. She also runs creative writing groups for children. She's recently been published in 14 poems, Impossible Archetype, Untitled, Fat Cat Magazine, The Selkie, Tipping the Scales Literary Journal, Drawn to the Light Press, Lazy Women, oh, uh, Forever Endeavor, Dare to Create, Analogies and Allegories, Out of Time Magazine, Calopsia, Visual Verse, Nightingale and Sparrow, Mookie Chick, Angst, and Drake. She had two poems nominated for the Pushcart Prize in 2020, and she sometimes performs at open mic nights in New York when the country's not in lockdown, and soon you can do that again. And uh, Anna, she, her, is a queer, bisexual actor, writer of mixed British and Asian heritage based in North Yorkshire. As well as poetry, she writes flash fiction, memoir, and scripts for stage and screen. Her previous work includes Little Irritants, Analog Submissions Press, Love Alberta, Wayside, 100 Friggin' Poems, It's Okay to Fall for Camp Boys, self-published. Her work has been featured in 330 Words, Alpha Female Society, Blue Animal Literature, Calm Down Magazine, Dissonance, Enclave, Forever Endeavor, Gingerbread House, Global Poemic, Mookie Chick, Prismatica, Thirst Aid Kit Podcast, Vagabond City Lit, Visual Verse, and What Rough Beast. You may know her face from Sonnet Sisters and Six Lips Theater, or her voice from Tin Can. Welcome to my unknowns. I will be quiet now. Hi, thanks so much everyone for coming. It's so, so exciting. Uh so much Hannah and Callie for starting us off. I was so nervous before and now I'm quite calm having listened to you two. So that was really, really nice. I, I've never met Hannah before, but I've, I've sang to her before. I've seen her read and perform and she's just wonderful. And um, Callie is a really good friend and her pamphlet is amazing. So you should all probably go and buy that gradual reduction to bone. Um, I, oh yes. Um, so I'm going to start with the poem that kind of forms the prologue to Unknown, um, which is called Womanhood, which probably needs a, a content warning. It's um, It came out of a conversation with friends a few years ago about some of the names that we had been called by men. And uh, I know there are some children here I've seen. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, swear words in this, like a lot. So you might want to mute me, I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is called Womanhood and I'm gonna share my screen, which I almost forgot to do. Okay. Um, we are ball busting banshees. Battle axes, old biddies, bimbos, birds, bitches, broads. Cheap cock teasers, cocottes, concubines, courtesans, cows, crones, cum buckets, cunts. Dramatic divas, damaged goods, demi mondaines, doxies, dykes. Emotional eaves, fallen women, fishwives, feminazis, femme fatales, frigid gold diggers, gossips, and gutter sluts. 
hags, harlots, harridans, harpies, hetera, homely or honeypots. We're hormonal and hysterical. In a Maratha. Sometimes we're gel bait jazabels or meretrice, minxes and moles, nags, nasty, needy neurotics, night walkers and nymphos, odalisks, aggressors, oiran, old wives, paramours and pieces of flesh, promiscuous prostitutes, if not prudes, psychos, pussies, ribs, we're scarlet women, scolds, sex kittens, she devils and she wolves, shrill shrews, siren skanks, skirts, slags, slappers, sluts, snatches, and then eventually spinsters, strumpets, talents and tarts, tchotchkes that grow to be teasers, termagants, totty, tramps, twats, unknown, 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 unladylike, definitely unstable, viragos, vituperators, vixens, we are wanton wenches, whores and witches, we survive. So that's, um, that's the swearing one. <laughs> Um, thank you. It is nice seeing people silently clapping, isn't it? <laughs> it's lovely. Um, okay, so the second one um, that I'm going to read uh, is Raised by Gulls, which is about St. Kenneth of the Gulls, who um, apparently was literally raised by gulls, by birds, and uh, had a very miraculous life. And I have always wondered uh, what his mother thought about that. Raised by gulls. Their cries drown out the babies. Pull me to the window where birds are dropping, crashing into glass with sick thumps of flesh and beak and claw, black eyes twisting furiously before they die. They pile one atop the other, grotesquely indiscriminate in their arrangement of bloodied wings, and I stare, my glassy eyes met by theirs, outstaring me forever. When the pact is over and the last stragglers, finally sensible of the suicidal chaos, turn and flee, I open the door, shovel gulls like snow or shit, watch downy plumes dance like ashes. Legend says they raised him, my saintly son, found a doe to suckle, built him a feather bed. Kenneth, godly, twisted child of mine, knows that life was built by me. Thank you. I will um, stop there and over to the lovely Anna. We're reading together now, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were doing two and then I was, then we were reading together, but either. Uh, I'm an idiot, ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me screen share. Um, so my screen around, I will assume everything is fine. Uh, if it's not, Rose, please shout at me. Um, so this is from Unknown and it's called Bessie. Uh, and it's about, inspired by, dedicated to Bessie Coleman, um, African-American civil aviator. Uh, there is a content warning just for a very oblique, mild reference to injury and death. I think I could be brave for you, Bessie, if you suffered a flight of fancy to take me on a tour of my stomach in the company of clouds, traversing with the sun and its classmates. Perhaps we can break a few rules and bones, frivolous damage in the wake of our love. After all, we'll get up again. This is not your fixed point in time. Perhaps we can save one of your cracked ribs and fashion a new disaster of gentler sorts, a queen of blue and silver in your image. We have all the sky to roam, but I wouldn't be anywhere except strapped to your back in this bold tin can. Let me be your wingwoman in this one room school of hopes and dreams. Glance back at me with your girlish grin, a peak of your wanton waggery, the action of a roguish spirit, aeronautique naughty. Let us paint a jest of physics in the language of the skies. Be seen from many angles like the moon, cameoing in countless windows. Bring the grounded some sharp, delicate relief. Your whole being, a collapse of tension, a trip, 
an embrace, disarming, freedom. I find it odd that no one else remembers your smile, that the portrait they all honour is a sombre affair, separating you from your body. I'll always hold the version of you that I caught in the slipstream, the rush of your knowing look, a joke shared with a carefree look over your shoulder, as if to say, are you sitting comfortably? Let's go. Um, okay, and the next one, I'm going to use a similarly dedicated to a historical woman. Um, and this is a tennis champion, uh, lesser known, but also champion of golf, uh, Althea Gibson. Um, look her up. The pictures of her are the most delightful things you'll ever see. They just fill me with joy. And frankly, that was all I needed. I was like, okay, sold. Yeah, you're, you're my first poem. I think she was my first poem and she might be my favourite. So, Althea. Before Serena and Venus will follow in my steps, I plant a kiss on my other self, beaming from a shiny cup. I had to be it to see it, born to silver, but I got my gold. Rose water was ready for me. Take a share in my image, my success. I am of a family of mixed doubles after all, and I know when a victory is my own. I have nothing to fear from those who try it on. It does not fit them quite as well. I'm used to playing within boxes, you see. I learned it from my father and the police. It takes a neighbourhood sometimes. I set the stage, all props present and correct, leaving just enough out of place by a degree so that a terrible accident might take place. Another black female on the court, skimming the net. It might be difficult but I made it possible. Whites washing on boil. The machines churning is my backdrop. What a racket. Thank you. Uh, now, I believe I'm gonna read with Liz. Um, uh, and we will read you a joint poem that is sort of a mini epic uh, about um, carried when the witch because we were both so excited about her um, when we were talking about famous women and throwing prompts back and forth at each other that we had to had to write about carried when. so this is a dual dual voice dual narrative uh, poem called Car carried when and Talia Erson. I'm wondering if we need to meet when the other one's talking. Is that going to be a pain? Yes, but I will meet while you're talking. I've, oh, I can't. <laughs> I just have to be really quiet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I wrote Carol Venn and Anna wrote Taliesin, her son. Carol Venn and Taliesin. Once upon a time, a goddess, a witch, um, it was me. It's hard to say. My name changed a few times. Could it ven, 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 could it ven. My son, Taliesin, was real, utterly. But I was a myth from conception. Swallow me up. I'll give you the language of heaven. Stir your fired mischief brew into constellations. Waves rushing over night sky. I paddle with clouds and drown among stars. You might call me a fool, but I could teach you a thing or two. Pull strings that sing like choirs of young lads. Do we wedi gorfa ne gwaith, but there comes no da iawn. Christ saw anyway, Keribach. Welcome to it all. You see, he was sweet, always sweet. Sweeter by far than Avagdi. I should have known when I set him to stir and stir that he was too sweet for that little body, that honey would seep from his bones, that there would be new life stirring in his veins even before the splash of inspiration consumed him 
and he became you. I'll come to you as soon as I become the full face reflected in the broth. Little Guion has something to prove. I just want you to love me to the bone, Kirid, ma'am. And I know the mist will do it. Even if I am lost, I will be able to walk on the ripples, peering down at your dire body. Yes, I will bastard you many more times. That is our likeness, a sunken embrace, gulping down towards the dark. Let me see thee in thy women's weeds. Don't pretend you didn't enjoy my chase, rage fueled as it was. You were more interesting with every curve. Every transformation yielded more life, more heat and blood and poetry. He stands before you now, the man he is, because I refused to love him until he was ready, until he was delicious, heavy with power. And I am here still, he knows I am, my old bones alone until he visits, when I dress them in flesh. Hunted, hailer, fur, fin, wing. Finally, you catch me up in your gullet. Not the mother's clutch I imagined, but so much more you. An enlightenment, the gift of backward birth. I scratch as much from your throat as I can on my way down, remembering the many padded feet that brought us to this place between worlds, within and all around. Kutch me, Mammy Fen, and see with my eyes. Remember what I am made of when you dress me. Ah, oh, Cariad, I have always seen with your eyes. In my womb you sang of the skies, and everything my cauldron fused became more than magic. At your birth there was star song, the world reborn with you. Caridven is heavy with the weight of me now. She stoops sometimes, fury swelling with my limbs. When I knock, she says I am singing. Though she sends her howls up to the other gods, a reminder Mind dod, hid all the ice. Get it out so I may dash it. Taliesin makes me monstrous, but his birth changed it all. Roydhani I gari gament, gament, gament. I could not find it in my weak heart to kill him. He was of my flesh and of the earth, so by reason of his beauty I allowed him still to live. If I had known that he would take his talents and turn them to immortalizing me, carried when the hag, carried when the witch, I would have dashed his brains on the rocks in the moor in the pain of the sea edge. But I did not know, though men lie daily, and he was beautiful, and I loved him so, so unexpectedly. Bound, wedi roima, I'm within, forever yours, forever bastard fashioned into hide and set free to drown, sewn into skin because beauty makes us terrible. Trade our sunken treasures once and twice to be taken up in princely arms, salt water staring into fresh sand and at last becoming. I think that's us for this section, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Yay. Beautiful stuff. This is great. I love to actually get to hear these at last after reading them and editing them and looking at them for um, a, a year, I believe. Right. Great. We're going to take a tiny few minutes to just get back off of the screen, go uh, fill a glass full of something strong, something weak, something liquid go on and have that quickly and we will start literally back up in only five minutes it is just to give you time to just get a break from the screen and then we're going to get right back on um i didn't put out a trigger warning or a content warning before but thank god the uh, poets have been doing that for me and um uh, alan will put the link back up to get your own copy of unknown or get handfuls of copies of unknown and give them to all the people that you know because they are amazing um and and please do that um and uh, when we come back, we'll hear everyone um, one more time. If you have any questions that you want to ask, um, put them in the chat, and I will I will harvest them and I will read them out on your behalf. So please do that. I'm gonna get some more chocolate milk.
Yeah, I don't speak Welsh, but that was absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to scroll up and see if there's any pictures. Any, any, any. Right, I think I'm going to be getting ready to come back. So when people come back, they can just come back. Right, people are asking, was that Celtic or was that Welsh? And it was so well pronounced, I'm going to say, because I don't know it, but it sounded fantastic. It was it was Welsh, oh. but but yes. Apologies to people who actually speak Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna. This is being recorded, so oh god, I never turned it off. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna make sure that um, that um, uh, Richard Cave sees this definitely. He's our he's our resident Welsh poet who comes to the open mic, and it, he, he's done poems where the the title's about really long, and it's fantastic and. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful language. And actually, anyone who is um, from Wales, it's my favorite accent in the world. It's so beautiful. I'm it's, half Welsh, and I've been trying to learn the language for the last two years. But Oh, my God. It, they, 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 they sound like little fairies and elves and wonderful. It's the most beautiful sound in the world. It's gorgeous. Oh, absolutely love Welsh accent. Love it, love it, love it. Right. We are going to get going again shortly. Um, ah, good. What are the authors working on at this moment? Yes, goody, goody, goody. I'm collecting the questions and I will read them later. Ah, that is, that's a good one. I will save that. And, da -da 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 -da. and just keep them coming. Keep them coming, my dear friends, and we will, we will get to them. Um, you know, it turned out really well um, when Hannah went first and then Callie followed because Callie's poems were... Um, Definitely, uh, I don't know, when anyone writes a poem about either William or John Hunter, you've got me soul because I work with human skeletons and I think the work they do is macabre and yet 
so important because people didn't know it was inside the body and, and trying to do any kind of um, surgery was a death sentence because they didn't know what the heck you were doing. Um, and so what, what they would do is, is we look at it and go, oh my God, that people had to know where the nerves were and what the blood vessels led to and what happened and such like that. So that was just amazing. Um, I'm going to, <laughs> someone said they don't understand a word of the Welsh. Um, I'm going to actually uh, do the order though, because we're now fully into the event and I'm, I'm hoping that Callie, you're gonna be ready to, to start off. Um, and thank you very much. So everyone, welcome back. We are now going to start the second half of our event. Um, there will be some content warnings and some trigger warnings for words and, and adult themes. Um, we're going to hear from Kelly Richmond, we're going to hear from Hannah Davies, and then we're going to hear from Anna Rose and Elizabeth, um, who will probably now be reading stuff from Other Than Unknown. You got to get the book. And the links for the book will be in the chat and put questions in, and I see a few. And so, turning it back over to the performers tonight. Welcome back, Kelly. Hello, thank you. I apologize for my robot eyes. Um, couldn't find my good glasses, so we're stuck with this. Um, I don't think I have any content warnings, so I just had a quick scan, so I'm not going to give any. <laughs> I do write quite gloomy poetry, but I think content-wise it's fine. And I'll just start the reading. Uh, so these poems are all from my pamphlet. I think last time only one of them was. And it's a pamphlet of eco poetry, but it's mostly trying not to be too preachy and perhaps not too obvious and on the nose. And this is the opening poem from the pamphlet, which although about destruction, it's hopefully all about creation as well. After the eruption, there was beauty of a kind that could not be easily perceived from the ground. Those fissures of terror were the cracular glaze on the ancient vase, forged from earth, finished with fire. This land too is fire kissed, only nature remains, not the bucolic green of overworked fields, nor their sensible grids crowd by barbed wire, but the reaching of fault lines, spider fingers of mother, the flute of rising song, the falsetto of combustion, the release of drawing unconscious, unleashing convulsions. Nature as in okra, as in umber, as in charcoal, as in iron, as in mushroom, as in ocean, as in bark, as in leaf mulch. Ruination so rich, a gift's mouth to mouth nourishment. In the stolid blink of her eye, the embers teem with life, life as even we know it. And this is one of the last poems in the pamphlet. And I suppose it's all about the kind of association and thoughts you can have when you go on walks. This is all inspired by a walk I go on most weeks. February. The dead reeds are singing, snap a finger, they cannot feel it. What a perfect shade of off-white, this landscape so creamy. I want to trust them, to close my eyes and fall back and be caught in soft embrace. The reeds are liars, they'll let me drop like those at school. The dead can't sing, but listen to the chaff soothing 20 years sorrow, quite literally saying hush on repeat. Take a handful, clench, no pain, just a subdued arch among lethean tides of noise, cool and embers throb at roots, her hair in a fist, her hair released into the wind, silent yet recall how it writhed with shame, dancing dead. A pond in a school courtyard filled with frog spawn and reeds, frogs fucking with wild abandon, watched by hundreds of girls screaming their prescribed disgust. Reeds hushing, calm down, says the swagger of the science block, looming over us, shoe of male genius bias pressing. I want to fall back and be caught. A courtyard in a hospital filled with a cronian swill, no pond. The doctors are kind but firm. 
the dead aren't rising, maddening whir of fans, stink of canteen grease, and spoken radius of space. Weakly, a girl would leap over the glassy void and fall in, despite the hundreds that made it, our cruel delight, half an orbit stalking this river, drawn to brittle fingers, their persisting lament, clutching still to last summer, observing perennial turn, wetlands swelling, birds migrating, the quiet biology of a crone lingering, flower, lungwort, between forefinger and thumb, rubbing. Um, betterment, which I'm sure is based on a true story in York, but <laughs> I don't know, maybe I made this up. <laughs> the deer is startled, bolt holes clagged up with newspaper, periphery patrolled by swinging axes, hosting Disney sing-alongs, their home harvested, birch boiled soft and topped with red brick duplications. The animal charity isn't interested, vermin they say, shoot them they suggest, bring back wolves and lynx, the rewilding enthusiast counter. Next morning three flattened hedgehogs mar the road, fledglings play with cats. And um, this is my last poem and I basically chose it because it features the cover star very briefly <laughs> and there can't be enough poems with Medusa in, in my opinion I'm always delighted when she turns up toil wake to dust motes in sunbeams convincing surge in dopamine oh radiance oh hope stand here bathed in honeyed lights regarding the stones Pebbles, rubble, boulders, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. Pick them up one by one, pile them into a trembling tower. The dry stone wall, a ring of fortitude, a khan of memorial, slate bone stack. Precarious anatomy, skeletal remains of the lovely, then the defiled, then the punished, Medusa. No head. Press your forehead to the dirt in sororal deference. Pause when her dust rises in cylindrical whirls, spitting grit into your eyes. O oh, beautiful day. Rebuild, rearrange, reassemble. Think yourself sculptor, modernist, abstractor. See here, these rocks germinating, smallest to largest, manifestation of ennui. And here, does this cascade not sing impermanence? There is romance in this labour, not object, but shape. Termite mounds, mammalian dens, sleeping forms ensconced by time, reminiscent of waking each morning to live a grown anew. Okay, thank you everyone and congratulations again. And everybody should read this, it's amazing. Thank you very much, Callie. Thank you. Right, and um, welcome back, Hannah. I'm really looking forward to hear what you have for us next. I really, I keep thinking about uh, when we were at that event, it's really good to hear you tonight. It's been a long time. It has. It's so nice to be here. It's really lovely. I'm sitting at my desk, looking out onto the street and sort of watching the sunset as everybody's reading their poems and that sort of lovely, magical time that you get in, at dusk. It's just really nice. And yeah, I'm just having a really nice time, everybody. So thank you. And thank you for, for your reading, um, Carly and, and Liz and Anna. They're just such brilliant poems tonight. Loving it. Thank you. OK, I've got just two now for you. Um, and the first one is uh, about having a bath, which is something... <laughs> I used to do a lot of, but I haven't recently for health reasons. If anybody's ever suffered from a skin condition, you'll know that having baths can either be a deep pleasure and relief or it can be like getting into burning acid. So anyway, this is called Afternoon Bath. I am starfish under, hot tap, top up, cold tap, drip, drip, drip. Afternoon hiss creeps in. Thud of rolling clouds and traffic roar. A seagull, a siren the cold cuts through. The children shouting outside game. 
I'm finger soaked and wrinkled in, submerged in suds, breathing in the gentle empty dusk. And what if all my other soaks sat somewhere here right now, indulged by time's rich fabric, dotted through the gathering twilight like a thousand china bowls of single syrup peaches stretching back to my forever. The bathings of my infancy, elbow checked before my spindly froggy legs kicked with glee in the shared porcelain family space of ducks and plastic splash and terrible pirate siblings with bubble beards. Here, in the afternoon gloom are the misunderstood soakings of my teens, pert and smooth, unspoilt sulks, knees up, full of razor cuts. And oh, how I laid luxuriously in the top floor of a townhouse in N22, the orange buzz of the city outside, a night out waiting to be tasted. My clean skin swapped for sweaty basements, sweet liquor and swirling hips. How my knuckles clenched when I gripped the cold white sides in Ward 9 and lowered my postpartum stitches in, my body a bruise, an exhausted ache that clenched tense, then unfurled like a jasmine flower in a teapot, weeping as they passed me the bliss of brand new milky skin. All these bath times exist now, all the tea and toasts, the tile patterns traced, the wine glasses glugged through hot condensation, the playtime tubs with toddlers, the soaks that soothed the tears, the candlelit chats had on shut toilet lids, the escape in water that repaired my soul behind the much needed refuge offered by a flimsy bathroom lock. I have laid as lazy as a lily pad in a pond, an autumn leaf in a muddle, muddy puddle, a boil in the bag supper, a pickled pear, a slippery fairground fish and a captured sailor's dream. I look down now at my full curves and shape and sex and legs, toes and feet the same as ever they were. And I think of a time to come when I'm a crone, thin with knees creaking, weak and still and ready for my final wash. They will lay me out and sponge me down and brush my wisping hair and then lay me to rest in a bathtub cupboard coffin like a pat of fresh butter in a glass dish. Thank you. Thanks. Everybody's going to go and have a really nice bath after this now with candles and smellies, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, I've got one more for you. Um, and this one actually comes with visuals because this is um, a this is a um, storybook that I wrote. Well, I, actually it started out, it was a commission. Somebody asked me to write a poem for their 10 year old nephew about life advice and all the best life advice I could possibly give. And I was like, that is a hell of a brief, but I'll give it my best shot. Anyway, I totally like bottled it and got really freaked out. Um, so I, I took to social media and, and asked, I think it was Facebook at the time that I was on most of the time. And I asked all my friends to like give me bits of advice that they wished, you know, that they, they'd been told when they were younger. Um, if I would have thought about this, I could have done this earlier when there were some children around on the call and they could have had a bedtime story. But anyway, I'll give it to you guys instead. It's a bedtime story. So it was it was my commission. But then what I did, um, once I'd given it to the woman as a poem for her nephews, I got my own nephews who really love to draw, to draw some um, pictures for it. So this comes with the, the um, illustrations of my nephew Shane Solly. Uh, and it's called When You Grow Up. Oh, we'll just skip all this, sorry. When you grow up. I hope that when you grow up, your friends are all hilarious and they make good jokes. Ones that make you want to pee your pants and your sides split. And I hope that you always wear sunscreen and eat broccoli and get a horse or a motorbike or a pet alligator or whatever else it is that you want. And if anyone tries to tell you what is best for you, you don't have to listen if you don't feel like it. Only you knows how to do you properly. 
And if you don't get a joke, it's okay not to laugh. Knowing nothing means that you can learn whatever you like. How to tame lions, bake a cake, fix a bike. And who you are now is just a small part of who you will be. The world is there for you. Make sure that you go out and see it. Jump in the waves, run down hills, build a den. And if you find stuff you like, then do it again. And all people are the same. They feel just like you. So choose to be kind and they'll be kind too. There are some things that are said that simply aren't true. No one is the very best at everything all of the time ever. There is not just one way to do things. No colour is worth more than the other. Pink is not just for girls. Blue is not just for boys. Women can be at their best when they are bossy. Men do cry a lot. And if one day you meet someone who only wants to be mean, please remember that they are not a lock on a safe. You cannot crack their code. You cannot pick them open to let out a hidden treasure of love and approval, no matter how much you want it to be so. No matter how clever you think you are at puzzles, the cleverest people are the ones who are brave enough to walk away. And winning means nothing if losing doesn't hurt. Pull things apart carefully to find out how they work. And it's okay to change your mind like a million zillion times. Don't compare yourself to others. Being just you is more than fine. We all have different styles and come in all different heights and sizes. Your body thinks you're super great. Love it, don't criticize it. And when it comes to things like work, remember that career paths aren't everything. The best ones to explore are the ones marked adventure. After all, skateboarding can actually be a job. And you should always remember to pack snacks and clean pants and bubble gum. And when things go wrong and you feel small and lonely, you might just need a sandwich or a cuddle or to hear a familiar voice. So always make the call, no matter how long it's been or how silly you might feel. And when you're on the train, don't forget to look out of the window. You might see a cow explode or a phone box bomb or a midnight alien invasion. And some things take ages and lots of hard work, but please don't give up. If people gave up, then we wouldn't have much. Imagine if everyone had given up halfway through building the dinosaurs at Legoland. And watch out for the bits of you that tells you things that aren't true. The worries that wiggle into your brain like worms. They hijack your thoughts. And once they take the reins, it's hard to remember which worry came first. It's a big mess of worry worms. But what those worms fear the worst is being pulled out of the dark and held up to the light. Drench them in sunshine and things will come right. And there is nothing you can do that is so bad it means you don't deserve love. Love is for all. Everyone's love is a different shape. Don't say someone's food is disgusting just because you don't like the taste. There is ice cream for everybody. And sometimes just remember to go slow for a bit. Like when you're pedaling really fast on your bike, it's good fun, but you can't do it all day. You can't do it all night. You've got to rest muscles, you've got to rest hearts. You've got to drink lots of water and you must let out farts. Hold on to yourself. Make friends with yourself. You are wonderful. You are made of stars. Keep drawing, keep reading comics, keep guinea pigs or llamas or baby kangaroos. Always brush your teeth and never, ever, ever listen to the grown-ups. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you so much for, for all your nice comments and everything. And yeah, I'll pass you back over to Rose. Have a lovely nice. Thank you. That was really good. I was thinking that's a perfectly good book for absolutely everybody that I know uh, from age zero to, to 80. Um, it, seriously, um, that was fantastic. Thank you. Right, um, um, to finish the performance part of the evening, um, I'm welcoming back um, Anna and then Liz. And this has been a really wonderful evening. Welcome back, Anna. Hi, okay. So I think this sort of answers a question in the chat, which was 
uh, were there any other women you discovered or didn't fit in the book and who are they? So um, this one is uh, another um, poem about surprise. Um, this is about Lamapa um, or uh, French sword sword wielding legend uh, Julie Daubigny. So this is called Julie Jolie Daubigny. Sword slinger, opera singer, larger than my life. Tell me how you'll pluck me from the nunnery and raise it to the ground, calling coins on our escape for our demonstrations of wildness. Forget men rich with drink and money. Let us write our own harmonies, the chorus under your fatherly wings in the halls of your palace, Athena. Your swan song will be a puzzle parade of all your faces. To me, yours will always be the most beautiful voice in the world. Um, and thank you. I'm going to change tack a little bit now. Um, the, my last two poems are a sort of a pair and they both have abstract reference to uh, sexual violence. So if that is a trigger for you, please do mute me. I will, um, I will pop something in the chat once I am finished. So I'm going to screen share now. Uh, and this is called The Moon is a White Fact. Between painted, no, blackened nails, I hold a shrunken moon, the mauve and yellow superimposing in the centre of this nostalgic, no, regretful, circle scene blessed, no, tainted with the errors of our ways stripy black and white scarves, no, scars around our necks and that x-ray light box glow, no, glare, foreshadowing. And the moon is the fact that, no, it was not my fault. And we sit and marvel at its beauty, no, nakedness, its lack of shame, no, guilt its pallid truth, and the moon is a chance, no, a moment at which things could have gone differently. Framed by glossy black spots on off-white rock, no, paper, no, say it, flesh. Uh, so that was part one, and this is part two. Sunspell. Smell the sweet birth of spring and know that if you speak the past, it will not summon him. Bake banana bread and know that while, yes, it happened, you did not choose it. And while he would tell you you allowed it, that is fiction of his choosing, like the fact was of his choosing too. You are not evil. Wash the dishes. Wash your face. You are not a liar. Cherry blossom does shine, pink and white, and you are still alive, and truth is multiplicitous. Children will name apple trees, green sleeves, and sunset, and paint signs, the months they were planted, and you will be alive to see their leaves. Write it. Write it. Summon sun. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Wonderful. I think if that's it for you, Anna, just go right on into this. Okay. Thank yeah, those, those were so beautiful, Anna. And yeah. um, I recognized some of them from when we were workshopping. So that was really, really lovely. Um, okay, I'm going to read uh, three poems from. Um, uh, a pamphlet that I've got coming out at the end of the year slash start of next year um, with Selkuth Station Press. It's called Breaking Out um, and it's about uh, realising that you're a lesbian 
after you've married a man, <laughs> which is, um, I always say this, not, not a life journey that I'd generally recommend, but it's, um, it's given me children and lots of poetry and lots of love. So uh, this, is, this first one is called Rebirth is a Myth. Fetal, the moon is waning against the dark in this bed, melting like a woman's cheek when a hand meets it. In the moment of acceptance, the I am, her ruptured surface was briefly whipped velvet, but now she is pockmarked and wan. A smile is not bravery and a caress is not permission. Under the cloak of the dark, I am is not you may. This is not a birth. This is a cockfight, a spitting feathers, a fucking scratch to the eyeball, a nail twisted through skin, a howling and then a muddying, a paling, a calcification into a child's painted orb. This is a waning, a curl of a girl disappearing into herself, falling from the edge of the bed, like a grey baby from a cradle. Um, thank you. Uh, the next one is more cheerful. It's a love poem. Skating. All night, glistening crystals have peeled across the glass, shakily at first and then at speed, chased frosted tips, made a game of skidding into corners and out like pinballs. We have slept motionless, oblivious breath, barely stirring the sill. But now we shiver and turn, throw languid arms and circling palms over hot backs, breathe warm, slipping dreams and desires into ears and mouths, kiss the cold air. You raise your hand and wave the stars away, point at the melting penitential ice, say, look, it's praying. And we watch it genuflect at the sun's touch, creeping down the pane to a pool of holy water in which our fingers meet. Sorry, if you can hear my cat meowing in the background. <laughs> She's just decided to get noisy. Um, my last poem um, is sort of semi-fictional and semi-factual. Uh, it's more based on my paranoia than on reality, but a little bit of both. It's called Think of the Children. Oh God, <clears throat> here they come, head tilted, curious glint in those blackbird eyes, overjoyed with horror. Always the same question. And how are the children? They're fine, thanks, Marjorie, fine. Yeah, loving school, ballet, you know, all that. But how are they really, you know, with everything at home, everything with your whisper coming out? Why, whatever do you mean, Linda? Whatever do you mean? I'm sorry to disappoint you. Well, I'm not, because your glee is repulsive, let's be honest. But they're fine. They're so fine. They're better than fine. My perfect rosy babies who still cuddle me every morning like newborns, milky with sleep and delight at the day. They don't give a flying fuck, see, about who I love. They weren't born with your puritanical bollocks about a man and a woman screwing in the dark every second Tuesday, dressed up as concern. They don't look at me and see a screaming queer. They only really give a shit about whether I'll give them Cocoa Pops for breakfast today or whether they'll have to make do with bran flakes because I'm mean and won't give them too much sugar in the mornings because the only kind of sugar they can have this early is kisses. I think, Becky, I think maybe you need more kisses. Yes, <laughs> for the Beckys. Excellent. I think kids just want Cocoa Pops. I think we've established that. That was excellent. My God, everything has been so good tonight. This is so, so excellent. So excellent. Um, yeah, we're, we're winding down and some folks are, are going. So we've got a, a collection of um, questions, but some have been, been answered, certainly by Anna. Um, one, and I think the, the, the person who and I saved a few names. I didn't save all the names. The book is available in South Africa. The book is available everywhere. So the books can be printed in America, Australia, Europe. Um, we were Europe, never mind. Anyway, Germany and um, and here, and it can be sent out to wherever, and um, and you will get them. If it takes a little while, you will still get them. So 
order away and we will get you this book. If you're very far away, like in Australia, you might find it actually is uh, cheaper and quicker to just order it from the local version of Scamazon, Amazon, and, um, and they'll print it and you'll get it <clears throat> in Australia. Yeah. It's actually better to get it from um, Amazon EU, um, um, Australia. Right. So um, there was a, a question that Anna had answered. Um, Martha had posed it. I believe Martha is gone, but it's such a lovely question. So maybe Liz, you've inspired, been inspired by a lot of different women in history and myth. Was there one you loved but didn't end up writing about who was she? And so Liz, do you, do you want to say who is, who's the one who got away? Um, and the one you wrote, uh, I think it's Anna, uh, it was brilliant. My God, uh, Jolie, Julie, Jolie. So do you have one? Liz, that you didn't quite get into the collection because we have to draw the line somewhere. Um, yeah, I I really love um, Arthurian legends. So mm. I would have loved to write about Morgan Le Fay and also Guinevere. And I also, um, I really, <laughs> very childish, I really love Robin Hood. I would have loved to write about Maid Marian. Um, so yes, maybe, maybe they'll come up another time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Maybe bring another copy of the Green Man out. You could write um, poems that go into that. Um, right, and this one, <laughs> Liz swears is not from her, but it came up in Liz's. No, it's Jane. Chat. It, you can claim that, but it's a really clever way to bring out what your next projects are. I'm only kidding. I know it's not you. It's not you. But someone asked, "What are the authors working on at the moment, and what projects do they have in the pipeline?" And I think it's a really good question. <laughs> well, I'll answer myself <laughs> slash Jade. Um, so I'm I'm going through the poems that are going to come out in the in the pamphlet in Breaking mm -hmm. Up, um, and I'm also uh, beginning work on a collection that um, kind of looks at Welsh history, um, and it that it's very vague, but that's that's where I'm at at the moment. That's excellent. Anna, what do you have in the pipeline? Do you th oh, yes, I, no, that's right. You did, did you, I'm getting lost, too many things. Anna, what projects do you have in the pipeline? Yes, I have to ask you. Uh, a million things. Um, I've got a, a lockdown based uh, pamphlet. Um, I'm translating Farsi poetry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've got a collaborative, another collaborative, everything I do is collaborative at the moment, um, just happens. Uh, so the other one is a collection themed around land, sea and sky with a couple of people who are here, I think, Kate and Nicola. Um, and I would like to write a pamphlet um, called When There Are Nine, which uh, is inspired by a um RBG quote about when there are nine women on the Supreme Court. Mm. Yes, actually, yes. I my Facebook picture still has RBG because until we fix the US, which will never happen. Um, here's a question. It's quite wide ranging. What inspired uh, the both of you to write this poetry collection? I would say probably Another not enough women out here. there. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, the women in the poems and another woman who's here, I think, if she hasn't left yet. Um, a mutual friend, Harry, brought us together. Um, and uh, then in uh, Harry makes a lot of zines, which are amazing, uh, which made me make zines, which I then made Liz read by uh, cycling around to her house during furlough because I had nothing better to do and she couldn't escape. Um, and then she said, do you want to make a zine together? And I said, sure. And it was going to be, a you know, 50p bit of paper. And then we wrote some of these poems and thought, mm. these are quite good, actually, aren't they? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> put them in the world. Yeah. I think that's good. I think that answer is for both. Um, this is from, I did catch a few names, this is from Bradley. Um, where did you both gather your research and information on the various people? Were they mostly people you knew about beforehand or did you discover lots of new people whilst writing? It was a real mix. Mm. Um, a lot of the time we sent people to each other as prompts um, sort of looked, looked up people that we thought would be interesting and sent them to each other. Um, there's one in there that I wrote about Ching Shi, who is uh, uh, was a female pirate 
who married her own son. And um, I would never have known about her, but Anna sent her to me and she's fascinating. Um, so, yeah. Right. Okay. Do you want to add anything, Anna, or should I go on to the next question? Sure. I, d I don't have a bank of research. I just gobbled up everything I could find about all of them and uh, immediately vomited my feelings onto the page. And that's pretty much, uh, yeah, apologies. It's not a, it's not an, a great answer, but uh, the way the way that I research and then write is very fresh and immediate kind of response led from the heart, I guess. It's wanky. On. That's not bad. You know, um, I've often described what I do as projectile poetry. So I know exactly what you mean. You know, just I, I've written it on my leg as I drive along back in America where I drive a lot. Um, and this is from Jesse. Amazing event, fantastic poetry, great diversity of names. Thank you. Question for both authors. Who were you the most excited to write about and who inspired you the most in your collection? Hmm. Which child do you love the most? Tricky. Hmm. You go first, Anna. <laughs> Coward. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm a bit obsessed with Medusa, not going to lie, and Medea and all the women of Greek myths because um, yeah. of Natalie Haynes and uh, Jean Mingus, who's my favourite booktuber, who interviewed Natalie Haynes, who writes incredible feminist revision uh, fiction and non-fiction uh, and I think translations of the classics uh, and it's just great fun um, and does lots of bite-sized accessible stuff about them uh, and also Althea Gibson because find me a more winning like instantly winning uh, person that you can't meet because they're from history and they're gone now but it's just I just fell in love with her from the, the stuff that I could find, the pictures and the facts about her, I thought she was amazing because she broke through so many. She just didn't care. She like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, and <laughs> you're going to like it, <laughs> and I'm going to win. She's amazing. I am, um, yeah. I we talked about this before that I think Anna did so many um, really amazing historical figures, and I am. Um, was kind of more drawn to the mythological. I really enjoy writing about fairy tales. Um, so there's there's the witch from Hansel and Gretel and there's um, Tatterhood, which is an amazing Norwegian fairy tale. Uh, I really enjoyed writing about, about her. Um, and then historically, Anne Lister. Mm. I mean, who doesn't love Anne Lister? And she's, you know, a local, so. <laughs> Right, excellent. And I want to thank everyone for being here. I'm going to do the last question and then we can chat amongst ourselves and we can buy books by books by books. And this is from Laura. Um, and it's actually a really interesting question because actually Graham Mort, who reviewed the book, had had mentioned this to me in an email. And, um, and I, I think I like how the book is done, but this is a question from Laura. If I was to research the protagonists in your poems, would you rather I did that before or after I read the poems? Mm. That is a good question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Mm. Read the poem, look the person up, read the poem again. Yeah, oh, I like that. That's a good answer. That's actually a really good answer because I'd read some of them and go, who is this person? I was drawn to go look them up. Exactly. It's a, yeah. What do you think, Anna? Yeah. I think that's about it. I think that's that's a good way of putting it. Um, I think uh, if people want to risk the, the feedback, you can unmute yourselves. I'm going to unpin my wonderful, wonderful uh, performers who are here tonight so you can blend in with the crowd. I probably should have unpinned Hannah and, and Callie during the questions. Thank you so much. It's been so good. Um, and if you all want to unmute yourselves and give a nice round of applause to absolutely everybody, I would super appreciate that because this has been absolutely a wonderful, wonderful event.
And well done, Anna and Liz, when you sent me the manuscript. Uh, my intern was here and we were looking at it and she about fell off the couch. And actually my daughter, Emily, had, had been over too. And she was like, we're doing that, that book. And this is the girl who grew up where I don't like poetry. And, um, and everyone absolutely loved it. And as, yeah, it's unknown, unknown, unknown. It's amazing. So yes, thank you absolutely so much. Um, everyone who's been here tonight, thank you very much for joining us. It has been absolutely a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, it will be uh, up on the Sterile Books um, website in a few days. Gosh, let me remove the pen. Here we go. And um, put everyone on gallery view. And so, yeah, thank you very much. It'll be on the, on the Sterile Books YouTube. Um, you can see it again. You've got till probably a, a few days. You've got a day or two at least to, to order the book with the free shipping. Alan is always really happy to have you um, look at our other books and look inside. That's it for me, really. I want to thank everyone for giving us your uh, evening tonight. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Unmute and say things. You can do it. If we make an unholy mess, what do we care? Fantastic. Thank you. Very